Hey, and welcome back to another video. So today's video is another special video because we have another special phone here with us today. This is the Sony Ericsson P5i Paris unreleased prototype phone. Uh, this phone was supposed to be released around 2008, but was canceled for unknown reasons. Um, it is a late development prototype, meaning the hardware and stuff is already selected. It's confirmed it's what's gonna be released in terms of hardware, but there is somewhat still a few software tweaks being done to it. Uh, this phone especially has a few software issues that are pretty unrefined. Um, so that what that's what basically uh, makes me think this is a late development prototype. This phone specifications were actually uh, sent out to the public and there are a lot of websites that talk about its specifications. Uh, there is a demo video on this and there's actually an advert promotion uh, which I'll link down in the description below. You can go watch it out. Um, it's an actual promotional video for this phone. I don't know if that was a leaked promotional video or if it, was, if it was actually released by Sony Ericsson uh, back in the day. So I cannot really confirm exactly on that video, but the video is low quality and it's out and it's definitely a promotional video. So this phone was on its way to be released. However, for some internal company reasons, it was canceled at the last moment. Now, like I said, this is an example of a unreleased phone uh, from a late development stage. Uh, if you wanna see a mid development stage phone, meaning a phone with a lot of differences to the final model, uh, mid development, meaning it's been confirmed that it's gonna be released. So it's not early development because early development is like, are we gonna release it or not? They don't know yet. Mid development is like, we're definitely gonna release this phone, but there's a few things we need to change and few things we need to experiment with. Uh, late stage like this is we're gonna definitely release it, um, but w the uh, there's a few software things to do. However, in, at late stage also, they can cancel the phone at late stage and that's what happened to this. It was developed, but it was still canceled. So if you wanna see a mid development phone, I've already done a video, you can find it up there on the Nokia N8 prototype uh, from probably around 2009. So that phone is quite interesting as well. It's a Nokia N8 prototype. Uh, I also have done a BlackBerry uh, Z30 prototype. That's a software prototype, but you can find it up there as well. And um, a Nokia Lumia 820 developer uh, device also, I'll put it up there. Anyway, getting back to this phone, uh, we'll be talking about all its specs and stuff in detail, and we'll be going over uh, some camera information, or some basically some camera samples and all the other good stuff. Uh, before we jump right in, don't forget to smash that like button as always, and hit that subscribe button if you already haven't, and you wanna support this channel. Also check out my social media down in the description below. And now let's get into the specifications of this device. So before jumping right into the specifications, let's have a quick go around of the body of this phone. Now, as you can see, it is a slider with a unique keyboard layout, as you can see there. Well, not the layout, actually the button uh, shape, uh, it's somewhat rectangular uh, with a double press configuration. You can double press to select which letter you want or triple press for the number. Uh, touch buttons over here and these are physical buttons we also have a navigational wheel uh, button wheel like thing so uh, right left up down and select with a ring light around it um, this button basically a touch button launches the uh, the app drawer or the uh, menu uh, this is web this is settings see I think it could be map but it really doesn't do much you should remember this is a prototype it's still uh, not complete so in terms of software that is. Uh, so not all buttons may work here. Decline call, accept call, the display, which we'll talk about in a bit. A front facing camera, uh, Sony Ericsson branding, the speakerphone as well. So we can now slide the uh, top part of the phone down and move on to this side. And we are greeted with the good old uh, proprietary Sony Ericsson CST60 connector. So the CST60 was a proprietary connector that Sony Ericsson used a long time back and they kind of gave up on it uh, 
I think around 2010, 2011, because people were complaining that just make it standard. This because if your accessories broke, you almost always you almost always had to get a replacement from Sony Ericsson because uh, third party manufacturers were not as good as they were as good as they are uh, here in 2021. For example, Belkin and stuff they existed, but they were not as good. So if your proprietary accessory broke, you definitely had to go get a Sony Ericsson branded one, which were expensive. Um, so people were making a fuss about this connector because as you can see, this thing has no headphone jack either. So everything to this phone in and out comes from this jack, the uh, Sony Ericsson CST60 connector. The annoyance does not end there. As you can see here, you'll be like, oh, that's the uh, micro SD expansion slot. It's not micro SD. As you can see with a closer look, it has the Sony Memory Stick Duo branding there. Uh, and it's an, actually a Memory Stick Micro M2. So Memory Stick Micro M2 is what fits in there, not a micro SD expansion slot even more annoying. So that's basically uh, what we had to work with back in the day with these phones. Uh, up top, we have a keypad lock button, kind of like on those old Nokias on the side, but this one's up top. These buttons are all very recessed. They're not really user-friendly. You kind of have to use your nails, even the power button over there. Uh, that's because this is a prototype. I'm pretty sure um, later on, uh, if the full release was gonna be confirmed, they would have raised these a bit more because they're kind of annoying. So we have a slider lock button there. There. Uh, it's spring loaded. Um, next, we have the power button on this side, and we ha also have a stylus uh, that's uh, because this is a touchscreen, by the way. We'll talk about that. It's a resistive touchscreen. Now, this stylus is one of the best styluses that I've ever held. It's so solid, it feels really solid. It's metal, the body is metal, the top is like a rubberized plastic. Well, the bottom is a rubberized plastic, the top is a plastic, but this feels really, really solid. It's a very, very good stylus. So big ups uh, to Sony Ericsson on that. They did the stylus really well. There's not a lot of phones, uh, not a lot of slider phones with styluses, by the way. So that's kind of unique. So on this side of the phone, we have the volume rocker, which is not as recessed as the other buttons are. And the volume up actually has a bump to it and the volume down is actually a hole. This thing launches the multimedia section. So this is a quick launch multimedia button. Uh, if you wanna go to the multimedia section real quick, uh, you can press that button. This is the camera shutter button slash camera launch button. So you can launch the camera with this and also take a photo with it. Now it is double press, so you can half press it to auto focus and full press it to take the photo. So that is quite interesting, but taking a photo with such a recess button, you can, you'll kind of have to do that. So I'm pretty sure this would have been uh, a bit more prominent if this phone was to be released. But however, on this one, it is very recessed and uh, not ideal for use. At the bottom here, we have the microphone grill uh, down there, kind of a large microphone grill, but back in the day, microphones weren't that tiny, so we have a large microphone grill. Uh, we have a lanyard strap to put it on your hand or your neck. Back in the day, tiny phones like this had lanyard straps uh, for that purpose. At the back, we are greeted with the back cover. Uh, this part, the battery, uh, the battery bay cover is actually made of aluminum while the rest of the phone is made out of plastic. Uh, this black line here is actually the speaker and we'll talk about the speaker uh, towards the end of this video actually because uh, despite being a mono speaker, this is actually a very, very good speaker. It's really loud and it's very clear. So we'll talk about that later. There's a place to put your finger and lift the back cover off and we'll lift it off at the end of the video and show you the battery and stuff as well. Up top here, we have the camera protector thing, the slider-like thing. Uh, it's not as user-friendly as you can see. It's also recessed unlike the other things and it has this texture here, but that doesn't really help. So you kind of have to use your nail there, hence why I have a bit of nails on my fingers for this review. Um, it's like the Nokia N95's camera uh, cover when you, on the N95, it's a circle, like when you turn it like that, it launches the camera as well. And with this is the same with this, when you open it down like that, it launches the camera, but I keep it closed because while I'm doing other stuff at well, it kind of randomly launches the camera. So that's more of a software issue than an issue with this. 
Uh, the five megapixel camera is over here with the flash and that mirror-like thing that you get on a lot of phones, the uh, selfie mirror-like thing for you to take a selfie with the rear camera. Never really understood those. They're really tiny, you really can't see, but I guess it's for, it's for aiming purposes, I guess, but whatever. I'm gonna keep this thing closed for now so that the phone does not freak out and randomly launch the camera. But then again, this would have been more refined on the final model if it was gonna be released. Now for build quality, and when it comes to slider phones, build quality is important, especially on the slider mechanism, because if you make it cheap, it's gonna come flying off. Uh, this thing slider mechanism for a mid-range phone is actually pretty good. It feels good. The spring, lawn, the, the spring load system is actually good. It's tactile, it feels nice in the hand. You can do it with one hand. You can slide it up with one hand as well. So pretty good slider mechanism for a mid-range phone. The back, however, this portion around it is actually made of a very cheap plastic. Um, this phone is in great shape because it has not been used that much. However, the uh, this I can see it getting scratched very easily. There are a few scratches over there. It's not a great plastic. It's towards the cheaper side. However, like I said earlier, the back battery cover is made out of metal, so that's pretty hard. And the rest of the buttons and stuff also feel somewhat cheap. This is really finicky when you try to use it with one hand. Like let's say you're holding it like that. You can't really use your thumb, your finger pad. Instead, you have to use your nail like that. So maybe that would have been uh, obviously uh, sorted out in the final model. Like I said earlier, the stylus is really good though. It feels really solid. Probably one of the best feeling st styluses that I've ever felt. Everything else is towards the general cheaper side, but it's a mid-range phone. You really can't expect too much from that. It is what it is. So that was a quick go around and the uh, build quality of the Sony Ericsson Paris P5i. So the display on this thing is a 2.6 inch display with a resolution of 240 by 320 pixels. And that gives it a rough pixel density of around 154 to 155 pixels per inch. It is TFT LCD technology, so uh, 256,000 colors. You don't get the full 16 million color complement, or uh, 16 million uh, color palette, uh, but for a TFT LCD display, 256,000 colors back in the day was perfectly normal. Uh, modern displays have obviously 16 million colors. And if you take a modern, uh, a photo taken from a modern camera or a modern camera phone and you put it on this display, you're definitely gonna notice a difference because of the color complement difference. However, for its time, 256,000 colors was, was perfectly usable for a mid-range phone like this or what we assume would have been a mid-range phone because this was not released, maybe on the $200 to $300 price range. Um, this display is also a touchscreen like I showed you earlier. Uh, it is a resistive touchscreen. However, it's a really excellent resistive touchscreen. You don't have to put too much force into it. It's, it's almost like a capacitive touchscreen. However, the stylus at the back is a resistive stylus, not a capacitive stylus. So uh, this is a resistive touchscreen, but very good. It's, it's really, really good. You really don't have to put too much force onto this display. Um, the display calibration on this phone is a bit off because it's a prototype, it kind of freaks out, but it also could be a software issue. Um, but um, overall, a very solid touchscreen and a very solid display for its time, perfectly usable for 2008. It is more towards the dull side. As you can see there, the colors aren't too saturated, aren't too bright. Uh, more towards the dull side, but that's what you can expect from a TFT LCD, LCD display uh, at the time in 2008. Nothing too great, nothing too bad either. Uh, it is what it is. Towards the more dull side, uh, the colors don't really pop. They're not sharp, obviously, at that pixel density range, uh, 154. Uh, you're not gonna get any sharp images out of that, um, but it is what it is. So that's the display on the Sony Ericsson Paris P5i. So in terms of OS, the Sony Ericsson Paris runs Symbian OS, as you can see here. Um, it is obviously Sony Ericsson's take on Symbian. It is not identical to what Nokia did. And it says P1i here for some reason, but this thing is the P5i, not the P1i. Um, but I don't know why it says there, but either way, it's Symbian OS and it's uh, definitely uh, being modified for Sony Ericsson's liking. As you can see here, this is the interface. This is the main screen. You have a bunch of uh, things you can uh, put on your main screen. You can customize this actually. The menu, um, 
Why isn't it? Oh, that doesn't always work. The menu uh, either is a grid pattern like this, a grid view, or it goes into icon view as well, but it happens at random actually. I, I can't get the icon view to come when I want it, but it comes when it wants. Now, like wh when it wants on its own, not when I want it. Now, if I press this, that won't work. Now I'll press menu, won't work. Uh, it looks better in the, oh, there we are. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> oh, what happened? Yeah, okay, there we go, stay. Okay, so that's the uh, icon view. And as you can see, it is old school Symbian with a touch of Sony Ericsson on it. They've changed the icons and stuff. It's a bit more towards the dull side, unlike Nokia, because Nokia had more popping, colorful icons. This is more towards the dull side of things, uh, but the layout and stuff is still the same. We have our entertainment over here. We have uh, media, browsing, settings, notes and stuff, uh, groups, messengers, blah, 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 blah. Um, messages, um, the browser has gone up there again. It's duplicated itself. Uh, another player kind of app, uh, camera, folders, call logs, stuff like that. And each of them has their own subcategory as well, obviously. Um, but as you can see, it is a uh, modified version of Symbian for Sony Ericsson. You can use the touchscreen for it, or you can use um, the navigation button, or you can use your stylus with the touchscreen. Now, uh, like I said earlier, this is a very good stylus. However, the touchscreen on this is slightly uh, miscalibrated. It, it's not too bad. It happens only at sometimes at random, but it's slightly towards the more miscalibrated side. But the uh, you don't really need the stylus, honestly. The touchscreen is really that good uh, for a resistive touchscreen. It, it's almost like it's capacitive, but uh, the calibration is a bit off. Um, it's definitely got to do with software, but as you can see, you can use the stylus as well. Um, it's just a bit off in calibration, but that is the operating system on the Sony Ericsson Paris, which is Symbian OS with a bit of Sony Ericsson skinned onto it. So looking under the hood of the Sony Ericsson Paris, we can see that's actually powered by a Philips processor, uh, the Philips Nexperia PNX4009 or PNX4009. Now, Nexperia is a company on its own as of 2021, but at one point it was a spin-off from Philips and it manufactured uh, semicon semiconductors and processors and chips for mobile phones and computers. But now, as far as I remember, Nexperia is no longer a part of Philips and it's on its own. So the Philips Nexperia PNX uh, 4009 is the processor. It's a single core processor clocked in at 208 megahertz. So it's a 208 megahertz single core processor. Uh, this phone has 128 megs of RAM. So uh, back in the day, that was pretty standard for a slider phone. 128 megs of RAM and 150 megs of internal storage. And if you want to expand, you have to get the annoying uh, memory stick micro uh, card. I'm not gonna go ahead and buy that card, but I can basically uh, store stuff on the internal memory. It's more than sufficient. And I can transfer via Bluetooth to another phone and uh, I can put the camera samples up that way. Uh, but that's basically the internal uh, basically the internal hardware on this phone. Nothing too great, nothing too special. A mid-range slider phone, that's what you can expect. Now you may think 158, uh, 150 megs of internal storage is uh, almost unusable, but I actually can take about 200 to 300 photos with that thing. Let me check, let's uh, boot up the camera there by pressing that button and I know it's gonna freak out now. Uh, I can take 143 images and about 20 minutes of video. So not too bad there uh, with the internal storage. So pretty standard stuff for the time. That was the internal specifications on the Sony Ericsson Paris. So let us now go on to talking about the camera and I'm not gonna be messing with this slider thing again because it makes everything freak out and sometimes the phone starts rebooting as well. That's what you get from a prototype device that's still unpolished. So the camera is a five megapixel autofocus shooter um, and it has a single LED flash as you can see there and the uh, 
the weird mirror like thing that I never really understood for selfies. It's way too small for that purpose. Uh, it can record video at 320 by 240 pixels. So at 240p, so nothing too great there. Probably around 20 to 24 FPS. I'll, I still haven't done the video sample, so I can't really say exactly. I'll put it up here, uh, the final confirmed frames per second once I actually have a look at the video on a larger display because it's because it's kind of hard to gauge it on this tiny display uh, but it can record video at 240p um, moving on to the front camera now this is one of those front cameras that cannot be accessed using the standard camera app a lot of phones at the time were like that and uh, how does the phone know that I'm talking about the camera it just lo it launched the it just launched the camera app there and it freaked out and locked itself again. Whatever, uh, it's, it just keeps freaking out. Oh, what happened? Oh no, it rebooted itself again. Oh, I'll let it do its thing. As you can see, when we are, when we whenever we go to talk about the camera, it uh, reboots itself uh, like that. And I, I think I also forgot to mention there's a light here. Uh, it only turns on when it's rebooting, booting or uh, charging under the lock button there. It's a green light. So where were we? Oh yeah, we were talking about the front camera. So the front camera, uh, you cannot access uh, through the standard camera app. Instead, you need a third party app. I could not install a third party app on this as of now, because I don't have the connector uh, to the computer, the proprietary CST60 to the USB connector. I don't have that. Uh, the Wi-Fi on this thing, um, it. I'm not gonna bother connecting it to the uh, to uh, the internet because it's gonna freak out. Um, so I cannot give you a camera sample from the front-facing camera, but the front-facing camera is still a simple uh, VGA front-facing camera. Nothing too uh, spectacular about that. Uh, what is it doing now? The phone has restarted in order to improve performance. That's nice to know. Stop freaking out, please. All right. Uh, moving on to the back camera again, I'll be putting a bunch of camera samples uh, basically taken during the day from the back camera and uh, that will be also followed by a video sample shot at 240p from the rear camera about 20 seconds long. I'm sorry I cannot give you a sample from the front camera but it's going to be identical to any VGA front camera at the time I'm pretty sure. So now let's roll the rear camera footage followed, the rear camera uh, samples follow, followed by the rear camera footage. So those were the camera samples for the Sony Ericsson Paris P5i and now you may have noticed that I didn't put a video sample and that's because no matter whatever I tried this thing would not record video. It just crashes and I have to either press and hold the power button for like 8 seconds or take out the battery entirely and reset the phone. So there is definitely a software issue here where it's not allowing the phone to record video and the shutter thing here is already really finicky. So sorry about that. I could not include a video sample. I tried over 10 times, but nothing worked. The photo samples, however, turned out really good with respect to their time and age. Uh, there are some photos that could have been a bit better and some photos that were really, really nice as well. This thing does have a slight issue with bright conditions. Like if the sun is in its face, it's going to have a bit of a problem focusing and it kind of gets blown out and like overexposed but if the sun is to your back and like uh the the uh, image is decently well lit this will actually take pretty decent photos and this is again with respect to its time and its age 
Also, I'd like to bring up the point that since this thing has so many software issues, the software processing on the images is probably heavily affected. So the final model of this phone, if it was to be, would have had a uh, more refined software and that more refined software could have actually processed the images better. So um, probably if the final model of this phone ever came out at the time, it would have had a better camera performance because the software processing would have been better, but this thing's software is freaking out as you saw. So it may be, a, it definitely affects the uh, camera performance there. But the photos that did come out, uh, they're sharp to a certain extent. Uh, they were towards the dull side and they were not that saturated. Kind of carries over from the display as well, but they were perfectly usable in uh, respect to uh, a phone for a mid a mid tier slider phone from 2008 so it is what it is also the camera shutter button here is a bit finicky to use if you move it even slightly while taking the photo it kind of blurs out the image so it's better to just use the uh, button over here but uh, if you want to autofocus you definitely have to use this but the uh, software autofocus when you use this is also really good so you really don't have to autofocus with that however i used this for all the camera samples just to be safe but overall a pretty decent camera even though it's not a sony ericsson cybershot phone because cybershot was more focused on photography and competing with nokia and they were better at camera performance but this thing not being cybershot still does a pretty decent job and like i said it could have been better if it was a finalized phone now for a speaker demo if this thing would uh, stop trying to launch the camera uh, i don't know why it keeps doing that it uh, has a uh, thing to launch the camera it keeps freaking out uh, it rebooted itself again let me be right back and then we can uh, demo the speaker okay so we're back and i remembered if i keep this closed it does not freak out and try to open the camera uh, so the speaker demo let's uh, increase the volume like that as you can see there make it max options uh select done uh, we have a standard uh, ringtone there i'm not going to even bother trying to load my stock music on this arctic is the song or the sound let's play it and put the, i already put the volume to max as you saw there play actually really loud for a uh, small slider phone back in the day and it's very very clear as well let me actually uh, play another one uh, find sound blue sky let's open and play So uh, a very, very loud speaker there. Um, obviously it's a mono speaker, but it's really, really loud and clear. And I'm not surprised because Sony Ericsson were known for their speakers. Their speakers are actually better than Nokia speakers. So a big thumbs up on the speaker job there. Um, obviously it would have been really nice if this phone was released and basically the future users would have definitely uh, enjoyed that speaker because I could put myself in the shoes of an owner back in the day and I would have definitely enjoyed those speakers, but uh, it is what it is. This phone wasn't released, but big thumbs up on the speakers there. Now let's go ahead and talk about the battery. So now we can take a look inside the battery bay and talk about the battery as well. There is a place to put your finger over here near the speaker and you can lift up the battery cover, which is uh, kind of latched in place there. Uh, put that to a side and we're greeted with the battery which is also quite rare i had to pay like 20 to was it 15 or 20 dollars for this battery it's kind of rare you don't find this much around unlike the uh, other sony ericsson batteries this is the bst 33 battery it is a 950 milliamp hour battery uh now I cannot find any form of uh, performance numbers on this battery on this phone because obviously no one had the time to review this phone because it was not released officially. Uh, this battery is also not in ideal condition. It's kind of bloated, sort of bloated, not a lot, but sort of. Um, so um, performance numbers with what, what it is, a Symbian phone, slider phone, 950 milliamp hour battery. 
maybe around 350 hours of standby and about nine to 10 hours of talk time on 2G. So yeah, 350 hours of standby, nine to 10 hours of talk time on 2G is a good estimate for what this phone is. Uh, though this thing shipped from China, it is actually made in Sweden, as you can see here. So I don't know how it ended up in China. Maybe it was sent for evaluation or who knows what. I, I can't really exactly say. The other one of this that's also on eBay is also uh, from China, from the same seller. But as you can see, it is made in Sweden, like a lot of Sony Ericsson phones back in the day. Up here, it says Sony Ericsson prototype, not for sale. Uh, not type approved, prototype build, DP 1.1, and a bunch of other information over there as well. The serial number is under here. I've covered that up. Full size SIM card. It goes in like that. It goes inside like that. And you need some sharp object to actually push this out. It's not doesn't come out that easily. The weird three prong designed uh, battery connector, as you can see there. And it has a uh, antenna for development purposes there and an antenna connector. You could put a uh, connector there and extend the range or whatever. Uh, that is a antenna connector there. I'm not sure if this phone was, if this phone was to be uh, mass manufactured, I'm not sure if that would be there on the final model, but this definitely has it. And I've seen it in other prototypes of this phone as well. Uh, but that was the internal uh, bay, the battery bay and uh, everything that's inside there with the uh, prototype branding and the battery uh, specifications as well. So for additional features, there's nothing too much in the way of uh, additional features. It's just general, it's a slider phone, obviously. So you can look towards the games and all the other stuff for additional features. Uh, there's an auto alarm that snooze, go away. Okay, so uh, the games and stuff would just just generally count as uh, additional features. We have entertainment and stuff over here. Radio, this thing has radio. It has track ID, so you could recognize a song playing uh, out in public. My applications, games, uh, the um, games folder is empty. Nothing has been loaded onto this thing yet, but I'm pretty sure you can load some Symbian games on this. Uh, video phone, music DJ, sound recorder, demo dashboard. There's a lot of stuff and we could actually go ahead and launch the demo. It's quite interesting. Uh, does it work? Oh, there we go. Okay, so but as you saw with that demo, it is not a Sony Ericsson Paris demo, it's more of a Symbian demo. The phone in the video was a different phone, um, but that is the demo option there. Uh, we have a bunch of other things. You have multimedia, you have your basically load up. Okay, your photos, your music, your video. There's some stock video there as well, uh, promotional video and uh, some other stuff as well. Um, I think that promotional video that I spoke about earlier is also in there. Let's see if it is. Um, so maybe that YouTube video was uploaded from that. No, no, that promotional video is not here. That's a different video. So that video was probably leaked from somewhere or something like that. So those were uh, just a bunch of additional features. There's nothing in the way of too many additional features. Again, this was gonna be a simple slider phone. There's nothing spectacular about this phone, apart from the fact that it was unreleased and it's a prototype. So yeah, um, we've come to the end of this video. And as usual, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like on this video as it helps this channel grow and it helps get this video on YouTube's algorithm. Uh, if you really like the content and you wanna see more, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below over there and hitting the bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord, and Twitter, and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. Thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in my next video.